And I loved your usage of the word employpreneur. And I think like you elaborated on that topic a bit. And I just think it's such like an interesting and important take on our everyday lives, not even just in career, just like the way, you know, we carry ourselves every day. And how do you think as students, we can really take action and really get onto the employpreneur path and having that mindset? Oh my gosh. It, you know what? I'm a per- I am a person that really values simplicity. I remember when I was applying to be a faculty member um, at the university where I'm currently an adjunct faculty, they asked me what was my teaching philosophy. And on the application, they had like a whole page of lines for me to write. And I wrote one sentence. (laughs) And my one sentence was, if you can't teach it simply, you probably don't know it well. And that that's my teaching philosophy. And so when people ask me things like this, they're waiting on this big grand dissertation of this is how you can be an employeepreneur. And I'm like, no, it's actually really simple because what I've learned in my journey of entrepreneurship is that the most impactful things are the things that people can remember and actually apply. No one will remember a dissertation everyone will remember a sentence. And so we talk about how to embrace that. The first thing and the simplest thing is to truly identify your career as a business. And it's really that simple. When you step back and say, I'm running a business and not just some, oh, this sounds cute and it sounds sexy to say that I'm running a business, my career. But when you truly embrace that this is a career, I mean, a a company and a business, it's a game changer because your boss is no longer your boss. Your boss is a client. And we treat clients very differently than we treat an employer. That person at work that gets on your nerves, and we all have one, we (laughs) all have one, is no longer just the person that gets on your nerves. They're a client. Because I have clients that drive me up a wall, but I view those clients as those clients will be how I eat, how I pay my mortgage, how my kids go to college, how I go to on vacation. I'm a shopaholic, so it will also be how I buy my next pair of shoes, <laughs> right? So when you start viewing your career as a business, how you interact with the people that interact with that business changes. And that's the biggest key to being a successful employeepreneur. For students who are interested in um, kind of pursuing the same path or roles that you have with like uh, digital strategy consulting and with working eventually at a startup, do you have any, um, do you think there are certain skills that you think that it's really important for them to hone in on or just any advice in that regard? Sure. Um, So I think skills definitely People probably give recommendations all the time. You should learn how to code, right? You should, you know, learn Excel. Obviously, I think these are the basics. I think it helps to be able to cover, um, cover those foundations in an interview, right? It's so all these common advice that you get, Excel, um, PowerPoint, coding, I think it's, for today, it's bare minimum. Um, Everyone will have that because everyone (laughs) is receiving the same advice, really. So, to stand out, I think you need to find your niche. Uh, personally, from a tech point of view, my niche was design. Um, in my interview, I was, I was like, I'm a self-taught, you know, Adobe Photoshop, uh, Illustrator kind of person. No formal training. I absolutely was just like, my school didn't have it. My none of my friends were doing it. I liked it, so I did it. And I think you know that really helped because that showed um, personal interests, and then you actually you know carried that forward so I think coding like sure like be familiar with a few like know some concepts I guess excel if you're going into banking necessary Um, powerpoint necessary for consulting so you know be good enough that you know keyboard shortcuts is my biggest advice (laughs) Uh, but in terms of skills I think best thing to do is to start reading up on the news Um, that's where you'll start picking up you know, some trends and some incoming like platforms that marketers are using, um, you know, just, just stay, stay on top of, um, current trends. Cause you know, it always helps to be able to talk about that. And even better if you say, oh, you, you've done it. Um, so I guess 
yeah, to, to, to wrap up like short coding Microsoft Office, like bare minimum, then find your niche, whether, whether it's, you know, if you're into some crazy AI stuff or design or, you know, video editing, like people, I feel like people tend to, you know, kind of ignore all these more creative skills but truly like in my consulting time uh, because of my design skills I got pulled into projects I like got great great recs because I was an asset that the team needed because everyone else you know knew how to code everyone else knew how to do excel and then I was the only one who had photoshop skills right so then the partner was like okay well you're handling the whole branding of this global event that we're doing so that's the client that i mentioned where we flew globally for um we had to organize an event so low-key high ktl vibes um for three <laughs> people in spain and in thailand um and i created the logo created branding materials um sent the email invites for it so truly like no 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 skill is valued less than another so you know if you're into music if you're into you know some niche thing like truly just own it and be 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 so good at it that they can't um (laughs) deeper question so what does entrepreneurship mean to you entrepreneurship um to me has always been the fastest engine to progress um there's government there's organizations and communities but i think entrepreneurs and ideas that are executed well i mean just historically there it's always going to be this way a well executed idea is always the fastest engine for progress so when i can when i can help an idea move forward um and know that in 10 years like even if it's 100 people's lives are going to be better or different they were able to do that without donations without you know a law being needed to pass it's just i just think it's like the quickest way that we can take ownership of our society and and the world and make something that we think needs to happen happen on our own grid so that's really what it came down to for me looking at onboard's mission and journey i was really interested in just your comments or any thoughts that you had on this topic so in today's globalized economy you know academic and social interaction with students all around the world can provide students with real educational and career benefits, but it also plays a wonderful role in innovation and the creative thinking process. So how do you think Onboard will help promote this innovation and ideation all around the world for students? Yeah, so international students in the U.S. right now, they currently access resources through groups that they identify with. For example, we've noticed that Chinese students communicate very heavily through WeChat, an app that I've never seen or never been able to access the interface of, and Korean students can communicate through this app called Kakao. Other cultures similarly have pages or platforms where they share information that could very much be useful to someone else. So Onboard is creating an opportunity for students, regardless of their ethnic background or things that they're comfortable with, to engage in social interaction, to really ideate and share strategies and support each other just on the common denominator of their visa status. So Onboard's really hoping that this will create a path for students to strategize cross-cultural communication, that how can somebody who's not on WeChat share that information or how can somebody who doesn't have a Chinese phone number access some of that information that has really helped a different student. So I think that's really what we're trying to break through in that spectrum. Yeah, it's really so unique. I think in my generation, we've been surrounded by so much diversity, whether it's, you know, color, um, sexual identity, everything, religion. So now sort of seeing lack thereof of this diversity in any setting is a little bit shocking to I guess people my age, but I think going into things such as the career world and like the task force, you do see a large lack of that diversity. And you it's hard to create those conversations because right, you want to get hired, you want to sort of be, I guess, cognizant or you want to be like obedient, but also those changes really need to be made. And it's something like we need to see more women, more people of color, but it's hard to have those conversations. So I think it's really, yeah. So the good thing is that we're starting to, we're starting to, and, and what has to happen, one of the things that we often forget is that civil rights is a young person's fight, right? And that sounds crazy to say, but when you think about the civil rights movement, think about a Dr. Martin Luther King, think about a Malcolm X, think about a C.T. Vivian, think about a Gandhi. 
these people weren't 40 and 50 and 60 years old. They were in their late 20s, early 30s. These were young people. Um, and so it is, and, and what makes it, what makes it easier for it to be a young person's fight is two things. One, you have to risk a lot to truly do this fight. And people who are older feel like I have, I have too much to risk. Like you said, you know, I want a job. Well, at 25, you want a job. At right. 55, you need a job, right? <laughs> So there's a lot. So if a if a 20 something year old gets fired, no kids, you know, no mortgage. If I go to McDonald's and work the fries, I can make enough to cover my needs. Right. The other thing is the the movement needs financial support. And that type of financial support typically comes from people who are more established. And so what has always been the historical narrative of these types of movements was that the older people funded those young kids being out there somebody has to have bail money that's probably going to be some established person that can shoot a couple thousand dollars over at the drop of a dime and say okay let's get them out of jail they're going to need um a, a civil defense fund okay there's probably going to be a more established financial person who's been in the workforce that can shoot money over and say i'll hire their attorneys and so that's why it's been this way so as my generation our job and and on is really to financially support the movement so that people like you can go out and do what they need to do and not have to worry about the finances of it. And so that's how it all has to work together. We have to all do our part. But I'm so glad that people your age are really out there doing your part. And even stepping into the workforce, being comfortable enough to ask the questions, wait a minute, why, why are there no people of color here? Right. You know, where where are the women what's this is odd because right. like, for example i tell people when i walk into a, a place in atlanta georgia and i see no black people in leadership i'm like that's odd because atlanta has one of the most one of the it's one of the places cities in the u.s with the highest concentration of advancedly educated black people so black people with advanced degrees. And you mean to tell me you couldn't find anybody to be a VP mm. in all of Atlanta? I mean, you literally have the AU Center, which has four historically black universities and nobody? Right, it's unacceptable. <laughs> it's shocking and sadly it's you, the norm in so many places and I think in the business world, there's sort of that stereotype of the type of people that you see in those high up positions and really hoping that um, this generation is sort of taking a change and people are taking action. And like you said, it's really people that are more experienced that are helping out these young people and also motivating them and really giving them the spark to keep right. going and really push for those changes. <laughs>